जय कुंज बिहारी जय राधा धा जय कुंज बिहारी जय गोपी जान जय गिरी वर धारी जय राधा धा जय कुंज बिहारी जय राधा धा जय कुंज बिहारी हरे कृष्ण हरे कृष्ण 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 हरे 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 राम हरे राम 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 हरे 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 कृष्ण हरे कृष्ण 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 हरे 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 राम हरे राम 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 हरे हरे शिशि राधा कुंज बिहारी की शिशि कर्णी ताय की शिशि जगन्नाथ बलदेव सुभद्र महारानी की शपराउपात की जय For those of you who are here for the first time, what you just heard in this kirtan was like a trailer. The real movie is going to start after the class, so please do stay for after the class to, you know, just have the real experience. Thank you for playing the instruments, boys, and Ananya. Hi, Krishna. Can you all hear me okay? Jay. Welcome to Iskon of Round Rock. Today we have our Sunday program. We're so grateful all of you could come uh, for the Sunday feast. We announced last Sunday that this month according to our uh, Vedic or Hindu calendar is very auspicious. This month comes only once every two and a half, three years. It is called the Purushottama or the Adikmas. We'll speak a little more about it when we give class here in some time. But one of the things that is recommended by our Shastras is in this month to recite chapter 15 of the Bhagavad Gita. So since it started on Tuesday, since we started this month on Tuesday, we have been reciting... Uh, chapter 15 of the Bhagavad Gita on Zoom every every day for 30 minutes. So we wanted to continue with uh, that initiative of uh, chanting the chanting our chapter 15 of Bhagavad Gita. So what we're going to do is we're all going to chant this together um, and we will after chapter 15 we'll select the verse of Bhagavad Gita that we're going to speak on today. So please everyone Everyone can see the screen? Yes? Jai. Okay. 
let's go ahead and get started with chanting chapter 15 of the Bhagavad Gita together. Shri Bhagavan Vacha Udva Mula Mada Shakham Ashwatam Prahu Ravyayam Chandam Siyasya Parnani Yastam Veda Saveda Vit Adas Chodvam Prashatastasya Shakha Guna Pravrita Vishaya Pravalaha Adas Chamulani Anusantatani Karma Nubandhini Manushaloke Narupa Masse Hatatopa Labhyate Nanto Nachadi Nacha Sampratishta Ashwathamenam Suvirudhamulam Asanga Shastrena Dridena Chitva Tatapadam Tat Parimargitavyam Yasmin Gatana Nivartanti Bhuyaha Tameva Chadyam Purusham Prapatye Yatha Pravritti Prishita Purani Nirmana moha jita sanga dosha Adhyatma nitya vinivritta kama Tvandvair vimukta sukadukka samge Kachantiya mudha padam avyayam tad Natad bhashayate suryo nashashanko na pavakaha Yadgatvana nivartante tadhama paramamama Mamai Vamsho Jeeva Loke Jeeva Bhuta Sanatanaha Manashasthani Indriyani Prakritistani Karshati Shariram Yad Avapnoti Yad Chapi Utkramati Shwaraha Grihit Raitani Samyati Vayur Gandhani Vashayat Sotram Chakshus Parshanam Cha Rasanam Krahanam Eva Cha Adishthaya Manas Chayam Vishayan Upasevate Utkramantam Stitam Vapi Bhunjanam Vagunan Vitam Vimudhanan Upashanti Pashanti Gnana Chakshusha Yatanto yoginas chainam pashanti atman yavastitam Yatanto pi akritatmano nainam pashanti achetasaha Yadadityagatam tejo jagad bhashaya tekhilam Yachand masi yachagnau tat tejo viddi mamakam Gama vishya chabhutani dharayam yahamojasa Pushnami chausadhi sarva somo bhutva rasatma kaha Aham vaishwa naro bhutva prani nam deha mashitaha Pana pana samayukta pachami annam chaturvidam Sarvasya chaham hridi sanni vishto Matta smritir jnanam apohanam cha Vedais cha sarve raham eva vedyo Vedanta krit veda videva chaham Dvavimau purushau loke Kshara's chakshara eva cha Kshara's sarvani bhutani Kutas to akshara uchate Uttama purusha stvanya paramatme ti udahritaha Yolo katrayama vishya bhibarti avyaya ishwaraha Yasma akshara mati toham akshara da pichotamaha Atos me loke vedecha pratita purushotamaha Yoma meva masam mudho janati purushottamam Sasarva vidbhajati maam sarva bhavena bharata Iti guhyatamam shastram idam uktam mayanagha Etad bhutva buddhi maam syad kritas kritas cha bharata Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare 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 Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare Okay, so as you saw that took us about five, or seven, five to seven minutes to read. So highly encourage everyone to please read the Bhagavad Gita, um, chapter 15 through this month and every day after that also. Um, Shla Prabhupada recommended reading one chapter of Gita every day. If you don't have your copy of Bhagavad Gita, we have that available here in multiple languages in the rack behind. So please feel free to take a copy today. Uh, and it is very auspicious in this month to read the Gita. 
Um, we're going to get started here. Firstly, we'd like to uh, we'd like to extend our warm welcome to Sridham Krishna Prabhu, who is visiting us from Bangalore. Hare Krishna Prabhu. So thank you so much for thank you so much for coming here and uh, making this uh, Sunday feast even more special. So thank you so much. Uh, I think Prabhu is visiting for some time. Where, where is Sridhar? Yes, is Prabhu visiting for some time? Yes. Oh, wonderful, wonderful. Thank you so much. Huh? A oh, couple of days. Okay, all the more. Then definitely welcome. Uh, I'm hoping that the weather and traffic here do not remind you of Bangalore. Uh, and uh, yeah, I, I have a. I work, my team works in Bangalore, and every time they come to Austin, they would always complain that the weather here is so hot. Like you know, we want to go back to Bangalore, and every time we go to Bangalore, like we complain a lot about Austin traffic. Every time we'd go to Bangalore for work, we'd complain we want to go back to Austin <laughs> because the Bangalore traffic is. Uh, yeah, I finished one. I did like 48 rounds once. In a, and I'm not joking, they're actually serious. 48 rounds in Bangalore traffic. 40, so 48 is like three times of chanting. So about six hours of chanting. Uh, you know, I'm exaggerating a little bit, but uh, it's just stuck in Bangalore traffic. So it's a very, uh, very unique experience. And we're so happy Prabhu is here. And uh, thank you so much again for joining us today. So today we are, um, you know, because it is Purushottam a month, and, uh, you know, we, I felt inspired to speak from one of my favorite ch verses from this chapter. So we'll share screen again here. Um, and we will chant the verse. Uh, if anyone wants, we'll ask devotees to chant a few times and we'll chant Mangala Charan prayers. And then we'll talk a little bit about um, this special month of Purushottama. Okay. So please uh, repeat after me. Sarvasya chaham hridi sanni vishto Matta smritir jnanam apohanam cha Veda ischa sarve rahameva vedyo Vedanta krid veda videva chaham Would any Prabhu's like to read? Sarvasya chaham hiti sanni vishto Matta smritir jnana mapohanam cha Veda ischa sarve rahameva vedyo Vedanta krit veda videva chaham Anyone from the ladies? Sarvasya chaham hiti sanni vishto Matta smritir jnanam apohanam cha Veda ischa sarve rahameva vedyo Vedanta krit veda videva chaham Any of the youth? Sarvasya chaham hiti sanni vishto Matta smritir jnanam apohanam cha Veda ischa sarve rahameva vedyo Vedanta krit veda videva chaham Let's going to share the translation here. Uh, Ryan, can you see a screen? Can you read the translation, please? Thank you. Jai, we will chant Mangala Charan prayers. Om Ajnana Timirandasya Gyananjana Shalakaya Chakshurun Militam Yena Tasmai Shri Gurave Namaha Shri Chaitanya Manobhishtam Stapitam Yena Bhutale Svayam Rupa Kadamahyam Dadati Svapadantikam 
ವಂದೇಹಂ ಶ್ರೀಗುರೋನ್ ಶ್ರೀಯುತಾಪದಕಮಲ ಶ್ರೀಗುರೋನ್ ವೈಷ್ಣವಾಂಶ ಶ್ರೀರೂಪ ಸಾಗ್ರಜಾತ ಸಹಗಣ ರಘುನಾಥಾನ್ವಿ ತಂ ತಂಸ್ತೀವ ಸಾಧ್ವೈತ ಸಾವಧೂತ ಪರಿಜನ ಸಹಿತ ಕೃಷ್ಣ ಚೈತನ್ಯ ದೇವ ಶ್ರೀರಾಧಾಕೃಷ್ಣ ಪದ ಸಹಗಣ ಲಲಿತ ಶ್ರೀ ವಿಶಾಖಾನ್ವಿ ಹೇ ಕೃಷ್ಣ ಕರುಣಾ ಸಿಂಧೋ ದೀನ ಬಂಧೋ ಜಗತ್ಪತೆ ಗೋಪೇಶ ಗೋಪಿಕಾಕಾಂತ ರಾಧಾಕಾಂತ ನಮೋಸ್ತುತೆ ತಪ್ತ ಕಾಂಚನ ಗೌರಾಂಗಿ ರಾಧೆ ವೃಂದಾವನೇಶ್ವರಿ ವೃಷಭಾನು ಸುತೆ ದೇವಿ ಪ್ರಣಮಿ ಹರಿಪ್ರಿಯ ವಾಂಚಾಕಲ್ಪತರುಭ್ಯ ಕೃಪಾ ಸಿಂಧುಭ್ಯೋ ಎಂಚ ಪತೀತ ಪಾವನೆಭ್ಯೋ ವೈಷ್ಣವೇಭ್ಯೋ ನಮೋ ನಮಃ ಜಯ ಶ್ರೀಕೃಷ್ಣ ಚೈತನ್ಯ ಪ್ರಭು ನಿತ್ಯಾನಂದ ಶ್ರೀ ಅದ್ವೈತ ಗದಾಧರ ಶ್ರೀವಾಸಿ ಗೌರಭಕ್ತವೃಂದ ನಮ ಓಂ ವಿಷ್ಣುಪಾದ ಕೃಷ್ಣ ಪೃಷ್ಠಾ ಭೂತಲೆ ಶ್ರೀಮತೆ ಭಕ್ತಿ ವೇದಾಂತ ಸ್ವಾಮಿನಿ ನಾಮಿನೆ ನಮಸ್ತೆ ಸರಸ್ವತಿ ದೇವೆ ಗೌರವಾಣಿ ಪ್ರಚಾರಿಣೆ ನಿರ್ವಿಶೇಷ ಶೂನ್ಯವಾದಿ ಪಾಶ್ಚಾತ್ಯ ದೇಶ ತಾರಿಣೆ ಹರೇ ಕೃಷ್ಣ ಹರೇ ಕೃಷ್ಣ 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 ಹರೇ 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 ರಾಮ ಹರೇ ರಾಮ 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 ಹರೇ ಹರೇ ಮುಖಂ ಕರೋತಿ ವಾಚಾಲಂ ಹಂಗಂ ಲಂಗಾಯ ದೇ ಗಿರಿಂ ಯಕೃಪಾತ ಮಹಮ್ಮಂದೆ ಶ್ರೀಗುರುಂ ದೀನ ತಾರಿಣಂ ಸರ್ವಸ್ಯಚಾಹಂ ಹೃದಯ ಸನ್ನಿವಿಷ್ಟೋ ಮತ್ತ ಸ್ಮೃತಿರ್ಘ್ಯಾನ ಅಪೋಹನ ವೇದೈಶ್ಚ ಸರ್ವೇರಹಮೇವ ವೇದ್ಯೋ ವೇದಾಂತ ಕೃದ್ವೇದ ವಿದೇವಚಾಹಂ I am seated in everyone's heart and from me comes remembrance knowledge and forgetfulness by all the vedas i am to be known indeed i am the compiler of vedanta and i am the knower of the vedas so again thank you everyone for coming um i am not qualified to be giving this class on this verse or this topic but i hope with your blessings i uh, will able to share something that you can all take home uh and meditate on so um you know because this was the first sunday class of purushottama man i wanted to read a verse from purushottama yoga and glorify purushottama so let's start talking about all things purushottama today right we're going to dive deep into purushottama so before we go deep into purushottama what does purushottama mean does anyone know best of the best of among the men yes purush uttama you know, purush uttama is best among men women all living beings um and this is this name is is for is the name of lord krishna and items that are associated with lord krishna um krishna you know and you hear the word purush uttama comes many times it comes in the vishnu sahasra naam uh, we hear of lord ram being described as you know maryada purush uttama similarly lord krishna is leela purush uttama so uh, the top mo for the the foremost who performs the topmost pastimes so that is like how we the word purushottama is used to describe that so things associated with krishna are purushottama but there are some special things that are that lord krishna in shastras or acharyas various sages and munis have classified as to be extra special so one of those is the purushottama or adhik mas um so i'm going to if you've heard my classes before i make some pop culture references i have been told by the youth that some of my references are extremely outdated uh, and then some of the other devotees have said they don't understand my references so if you don't get my pop culture reference i apologize in advance but there used to be this tv show called fraser has anyone heard seen fraser no thank you thank you okay so there's an episode i'm not going to explain the whole show but there's an episode which is on leap day and the main character in that show says this line which i really like he says today is leap day let's take a leap because you know you don't get 29th february every year you get it once every four years so you want to make the most use of this extra day which is given a gift right now imagine if you're a month full of leap days a month full of these special days that you only get every two and a half three years and you don't know when you're going to get it but you're going to get it at some time and they make it so special so purushottama month is like that it is the holiest of month that occurs every three years and it is to be it is the year that it is the month that you take a leap in your spiritual advancement 
It is described that in this month, the performers of um, Karma Kanda actually get no benefit in this month. So the, that is the power of this month. Imagine performing ritualistic or materialistic activities gives you no fruitive results at all. But any spiritual activity you perform in this month is like magnified. That is the power of this Purushottama Adikmas, which is why it is not just um, not just in our Vai Gaudiya Vaishnava culture we talk about Purushottama Adikmas. Across the board, this month is celebrated with lot of lot of um, significance because it is in this Adikmas Lord Krishna has condensed his like potencies, mercy, blessings, everything in this. And only devotional service that's Krishna Bhakti performed in this month gets maximum results. So, uh, you know, you think we, every, every year we celebrate the month of Kartik. This is like Kartik condensed into one month that comes every three years. So it's a very, very special month. Um, this is described as Krishna's favorite month. Uh, in Gita, Krishna says, you know, in 15, 18, I'm celebrated both in the world and in the Vedas as that supreme person, Purushottama. So, uh, you know, Krishna is the supreme amongst all incarnations. Similarly, the Purushottama month is the supreme and holiest among all months. In Padma Purana and Skanda Purana, there are various uh, shlokas that indicate the glories of this month. So, we're just going to give one or two references. Um, Naimisharanya sages, when they got together, uh, and the, in, the sages got together in Naimisharanya, they mentioned that Purushottama month mercifully acts like a desire tree to fulfill a devotee's desire. Just think about it. This month, if we have a spiritual desire, this whole month is like, it's like your Chintamani tree, touchstone, and a desire tree, Kalpavriksha. It will just fulfill your desire this month. Narada Muni says that Purushottama month is the best of all months, vratas and austerity. Just by hearing the glories of Purushottama month, one attains Krishna Bhakti and immediately nullifies the sinful reaction. One who performs the Purushottama vrata properly will attain unlimited Sukriti and go to the spiritual world. So, so much of benefit, spiritual benefit in performing vrata austerity in this month. Now, when we say vrata, it, it's not, it does not mean that, you know, we all have to stand on one leg in the middle of like Texas, in the middle of Austin heat and, you know, have like fire ants all over you and not react. No, that's not vrata, right? Krishna Bhakti is so beautiful by chanting every day, chanting a few extra rounds, by reading chapter 15 of the Bhagavad Gita regularly, by reading Srimad Bhagavatam regularly. Um, you know, one can attain a lot of spiritual benefit by fasting. Um, I know recently uh, there were also been verses shared which glorify Krishna uh, from the perspective of Govardhana, like one who lifts the Govardhana, beautiful verses. All of these shlokas, it's really nice to read. So uh, one of my one of the one of my Shiksha gurus, he used to say, when there is shloka, there is no shoka. Shoka means grief. Wherever there is shlokas, there is no shoka. So this is a month for us to dive deeper into our shlokas and shastras here. So uh, please take, I know all of you here are very well read and uh, read a lot more than I do. So I am just sitting here as the mouthpiece of our acharyas is uh, please use this month as an opportunity to read more, uh, read together and it, it's a very powerful thing. So, we spoke about the Purushottama month. Now we'll talk about Purushottama Yoga. This verse from Bhagavad Gita we just read, chapter, the verse, uh, 15th verse from the 15th chapter of the Bhagavad Gita. So, this verse is very interesting because it talks more about who is Purushottama. So, you know, Krishna has unlimited names. And when we hear names of Krishna, there's an image that props up into my head, into our heads, right? So, if I say Govinda, what do you think? What image of Krishna comes in your head when I say Govinda? Krishna with cows, right? When I say Makhanchor, what is the image that comes in our head? Krishna? Stealing butter, right? So when I say the word Purushottama, what comes up in your head? When I say Purushottama, what do you think? I'm sorry? Uh, you came to the end of my class. That's like spoiler alert right there. But yes, Lord Jagannath comes. What else comes into mind when we say Purushottama? Universal form? Excellent. Any Anyone else? Anything else? Dakshi Prabhu gave the exact answer. It's universal form. Like when you think of Purushottama, you may not, the first image that comes to your head may not be Krishna stealing butter or Krishna like Damodar, right? We think of Someone magnanimous, someone big, you know, like huge, right? 
like we don't think of it in all of iskon i don't know if you have any radha purushottam temple i don't know if there is i'm i stand to be corrected but i have not heard of shri shri radha purushottam you know temple anywhere no it's not cuz purushottam has this like big meaning right and and as who, who said uh, virat ru who said the universal form yes so in fact arjuna also when he desires to see the supreme lord in chapter 11 verse the third verse in chapter 11 arjuna says eva metad yathatvam atmanam parameshwaraha drashtum ichhami te rupam aishvaryam purushottamam so arjuna says to krishna o oh, greatest of all personalities o oh, supreme form i see you here before me in your actual position as you have described yourself i wish to see how you enter into this cosmic manifestation i want to see that form of yours so arjuna is desiring to see krishna's purushottama aishwaryam purushottamam that universal form what happens after krishna shows his universal form to arjuna what happens he gets he gets bewildered and he gets scared he gets scared and then the first thing he tells krishna is this is very wonderful this is so you know so you you know you are arjuna is enamored and he says you are the father of this complete man of cosmic manifestation of the moving non moving you are the worshipful chief the supreme spiritual master no one is greater than you you are within you know you are within the three worlds all lot of immeasure im, me, immeasurable power and then he says but i am fearful right says that uh, he says that oh janardana uh, sorry he he actually tells krishna that can you please show me your four handed form so krishna eventually shows him his four handed and his two handed form and seeing the two handed form arjuna says um it says when arjuna saw this krishna in his original form original is a two handed form oh janardana seeing this human like form so very beautiful i am now composed in mind i am restored to my original nature so the universal form which is aishwaryam purushottamam is actually very hard for us to process i was hearing in a class um i think it was by goranga prabhu where he was mentioning somebody went and asked shila praupad why at the temples you have radha krishna why are you not putting the actual form of krishna the universal form every temple of yours should have the virat roop in it so then praupad said like there is not enough fabric on this planet to actually cover the universal form of the lord if we had in every temple and you know i was think, I, as i when i heard that and as you know when we try to dress deities i can just imagine the stress of having to dress krishna in his universal form you know three times a day when you change the outfits like it's a very exhausting process right so so krishna so when we think of the universal form um when chapter 11 that is titled universal form you know we think of the virat roop right but universal has an other meaning actually so what is another so universe of course means universal but what is an other meaning of universe universal has anyone used i mean it's kind of outdated but has anyone used a universal remote anyone's used what does a universal remote do it works anywhere what what does it make our devices thank you accessible right it makes it accessible universal is not necessarily something grand universal is accessible is another meaning of universal is accessible that is why when we travel i'm sure you know prabhu must have had a universal plug that you might be traveling with you right from india that allows you to connect everywhere so universal actually means something that is makes things except accessible for us so in this verse actually in chapter 15 krishna is talking about his accessibility the first line of this verse says sarvasya chaham hridi sannivishto sarvasya chaham i reside in everybody's heart sarvasya chaham hridi sannivishto krishna is telling us that as the supreme purushottama the top most of men he resides in all of us as the parmatma he is making himself accessible to us the lord who is limitless you know we just talked about as purushottama as a virat form we see he's entire all consuming as purushottama is also seated in everybody's heart as the paramatma and he is compile he is also mentioning that he gives us the knowledge to remember him he is allah he is remembrance knowledge and forgetfulness and we'll talk about forgetfulness in just a second here but he is giving us the ability to remember him so not only is he residing in our hearts he's also giving us remembrance now when you step back and think it says sarvasya chaham hridisanivishto it doesn't say bhakta chaham hridisanivishto 
Krishna doesn't say only reside in the heart of devotees. So when people question, is Krishna impa- what, what about Krishna's partiality and impartiality, this verse is a very good answer. Krishna is impartial. Because Krishna resides in everybody's heart. If Krishna was truly uh, partial, then he would only reside in the heart of devotees. Why should he actually reside in everybody's heart? The difference between a devotee and someone who is not a devotee is a devotee knows Krishna is residing within his heart. And the non-devotees don't know that. They don't know Krishna is residing. Even though it's in the Bhagavad Gita, Krishna is not only uh, in our heart, he's also giving us knowledge to tell, hey, FII, I'm in your heart. Think about it. He has not only put programmed the GPS for you, he's also driving your car. And yet, sometimes we don't want to recognize that. We don't want to acknowledge the supremacy of Lord, right? Devotees, the difference between devotees and non-devotees is we understand, any, any bhakta understands that Krishna is in our heart. You know, one the beautiful bhajan, which was composed by Mirabai, and it was, it was made popular in the 80s uh, by uh, Vayasaki Prabhu, it goes like, Antara Mandire Jago Jago Madhava Krishna Gopal Nava Aruna Sama Jago Hridai Mama Sundara Giridhari Lal Please arise, please arise in the temple of my heart. O Madhava, O Krishna, O Gopal, please arise glowing radiantly in my heart like the new sunrise. O beautiful one, O darling Giridhari Lal. So here we see very clearly that a devotee knows that Krishna is residing in their heart. And when one knows that Krishna is residing in their heart as Paramatma, we have to respect that. We learn to respect Purushottama, not just in the magnanimity, but also within the heart. Not just of us, of every single living being we see. So I was actually interested when I, um, you know, when I was reading this point here, because I always thought, you know, in the fifth chapter of the Gita, you know, Vidya Vinaya Sampane Brahmane Kavi Hastani is there, where you say, you look at everybody the same way, but actually in the shloka, up till this point, up till Sarvasya Chaham Hridisa Nivishto, Krishna actually has not said he resides in everybody's heart. In the purport, Prabhupada talks about it, but actually till this point, until the 15th chapter, Krishna has not revealed to Arjuna that he resides in everybody's heart. But the reason the verse, fifth chapter verse is stressed upon is because this is telling us why we look at everybody equally. Because the Lord resides in each and every person, living entity, animals, you know, fish, bugs even, as a supreme Lord. If we understand that fundamental principle that, you know, we all are children of the Lord, the Lord resides in all of us, where is there scope for committing offense? Where is the scope of saying or doing something hurtful to each other? When we understand this fundamental principle that we're all connected, you know, we talked about universality of the Lord, right? The fact that Krishna is residing in all of our heart is connecting each one of us. We have these um, invisible connections that are made with each and every person, you know, and those connections get stronger and stronger when we chant the holy name together. When we chant, when we, when we dive into Shastra like this, that is when we realize, oh, I'm connected. You know, like I'm connected to Mrigakshi Mataji. Why? You know, we're connected for many reasons. Particularly if you've tasted a prashadam, you want to be connected with her. But also because of the holy name. We're connected. Why? Because the ho- chanting of the holy name allows us to realize that Krishna resides within our heart. It purifies us because Krishna has established that. He's residing in everybody's heart. He's giving us the remembrance also that I'm residing in your heart. Krishna is telling I'm giving you knowledge also. And how Krishna gives us the knowledge is the next part of this verse. Where he says, Vedanta Krit Veda Videva Chaham. I am the compi- I am the compiler of the Vedas. I am the I am the knower of the Vedas, and I am also the worshipful of the Vedas. Just like we step back and think of it, Krishna has created the Vedas, authored the Vedas. The Vedas are about Him and the Vedas tell you to worship Him. That is how much visible, obvious knowledge Krishna has given us about Him. He's made His knowledge like accessible. And by the mercy of you know, His Divine Grace, A.C. Bhakti Vedanta, Srila Prabhupada and so many devotees, this knowledge of Krishna's accessibility has reached everywhere. So Krishna has made the knowledge accessible. 
But as we were reading yesterday in the purport of, of chapter 8, of verse 8 of the 15th chapter, Krishna also has given us minute independence. That was the word Srila Prabhupada used in that purport, which I really liked it. Krishna has given us that minute independence to understand. Do you want to remember him or not? Do you want to relate with him or not? Do you want to establish a relationship with him or not? That minute independence is ours. It's very small, but it's a big independence, right? It is that one decision that can change our life. It is the one decision that affects, you know, what we do, right? Sometimes it's, 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 it's easy to look at even our life as this, oh, like what, like what, like, you know, what is the point of that independence? Like, I'm just going to surrender to Krishna completely. But like, even to surrender to Krishna is your independence. All of you who are here on a Sunday, there are many things you could have been doing today. Many things. You could have slept in, you know, you could have, I don't know, watched a movie, you could have uh, cleaned your house, you could have organized your garage, you could have done like, in, there's just many, many things. But you all took a choice to come here. You know, I hope the kids also feel like it's their choice to come here. But for those of you over the age of 18, you definitely took a choice to come here. <laughs> Mohit is shaking his head, so it's actually going to we need to speak. <laughs> so uh, I'm just teasing you but like we all took a choice to come here right that is that is a minute independence Krishna is talking about because sometimes making that small decision even makes a huge difference in our life you know? and we step back and we think about decisions we've made in our life like the small decisions the big impact it had so um, coming back here to this that is Purushottama Purushottama as magnanim his magnanimity is in his accessibility now we think of this even of leaders, right? In just in like our material world, people who are famous, right? Like not not celebrity, even celebrities to some degree, but like people who we consider as revolutionaries who are following, whether it's someone like Mahatma Gandhi or Martin Luther King, why they had that following was because they were accessible. You know, they were accessible to the people. People felt that they could relate to them. You know, my father used to say, uh, my father used to say something. I think he read that in his history book that it would say, you know, Mahatma Gandhi would sit in a jail and would follow. They had no Twitter, no Facebook, no WhatsApp, nothing. How that message got communicated till today, I don't understand. And it's not like, you know, Mahatma Gandhi said it in January and in May, somebody is throwing away their degree. No, it was almost instantaneous. Like that's like original instant messaging, you know. But why? So Krishna, so when, and this is also what Arjuna is saying to Krishna. Like when he tells him, can you please show me your two-handed form? Because... That's the form I know you with. And that is the form that Krishna manifests in his deities. You know, he, Krishna is such a, he's, Krishna is Purushottama because he's making him accessible and relatable to all of us. So that we can easily remember, right? And why Krishna says in this verse that he's also forgetfulness is because you want forgetfulness to exist in your life. The reason I said earlier I like this verse is because anytime I forget anything, I quote this verse, I blame Krishna, I forgot to pick up, you know, the potatoes today, or I forgot to pick up your dry cleaning today, my husband is not here, so I can say those things right now. So this is the verse I quote the most, but on a very serious topic, imagine if we could remember everything. Imagine if we could remember everything. First of all, like if you could remember how you were born, you'd be like traumatized for your life. You probably would never have children, because you're like, I don't want to put them through that you don't want to, you actually want to forget. Um, they've done studies of people who have eidetic memory. Some people have like memory that they don't forget anything that they've read or heard and or witnessed in life. And many of them actually say that it's not as good as you think it would be. Like, you know, wouldn't we want to have that perfect memory? Like imagine if you read chapter, I have been reading chapter 15 for like 20 years of my life. Every Purushottam month I memorize it, then I forget it over the two years. And then Purushottam month comes again and then it's like, it's so hard, right? We were, can I, was it with you? I was sharing, like, it's amazing how in our memory, only like useless Bollywood songs stick, but shlokas don't stay. Am I, am I the only one who feels like that or is everyone? Yes, yeah, so it's like useless thing. Krishna doesn't give us forgetfulness, but for things you want to remember, that is why you forget. But Krishna also makes us forget a lot of things that we don't want to remember. Like, imagine if we all remembered our past lives. Like, how difficult it would be for us to move forward, right? So Krishna's forgetfulness is actually, he gives us forgetfulness to help us progress in bhakti. 
So Krishna is giving us remembrance, knowledge and forgetfulness so we can progress in bhakti. And then Krishna is also making himself so accessible and relate to, re relatable to us. That is why Krishna exists in so many different ways so that we don't have an excuse to say, where's God? I don't see God. Well, how, can, how can anyone say that they don't see God? Because God exists, Krishna exists in so many ways. Krishna exists in his beautiful deity form here, as we are all saying in Shri Radha Kunj Bihari. Krishna exists in Shastras. Veda is not one book. Veda is all knowledge. Right? Krishna exists in our Shastras, in the Vedas, in the Bhagavad Gita, in Srimad Bhagavatam. Krishna is existing in a book form, so we can relate to. Krishna is existing in so many beautiful bhajans and songs and dances that are out there to help us remember. Like when you look at any of the classical dance forms like Karnatic or Hindustani music or Bharatnatyam, all of those initial songs were written to glorify God. Like there was nothing else there. They were all written, you know, you think of Tyagaraja, Anamacharya, all of these great saints. Only thing they sang was to glorify the Lord. In so many songs, the Lord exists, you know. Krishna exists in, in so many different ways. Krishna, and, and he, why he's doing that? Because he loves all of us. Because Sarvasya Chaham Hradisani Vishnu. Krishna resides in all of us. He wants to make it easy for us to access him. So we cannot say that it is difficult to access Krishna. And, you know, when we're speaking about Purushottama, it feels like we have to, we have to talk a little bit about Purushottama Shetra or Jagannath Puri Dham. You know, and uh, um, remind me your name again. Sudarshini, thank you. I was going to call you Sanjana for some reason. I'm so sorry. Sudarshini. Sudarshini said that when I asked Purushottama, what is Purushottama? She said Jagannath. So yes, another name for Lord Jagannath, who is of course Krishna, is also Purushottama. It is, uh, you know, it's described the Lord of the Universe is known as Purushottama and his abode is known as Purushottama Dhamma or Purushottama Kshetra. So, we spoke about Purushottama Mas, we spoke about Purushottama Yoga, now we will speak about Purushottama Kshetra, which is Jagannath Puri Dham. How many of you all here have been to Jagannath Puri? Good, many devotees, wonderful, wonderful. Uh, last Sunday, Charagopika Mataji, uh, you know, she spoke about Lord Jagannath. I was joking with her. Mataji actually took points from what my original class was going to be about, but it was really nice. She, I got an opportunity to meditate on this verse. But Mataji spoke very wonderfully about, um, about you know, who Lord Jagannath is and why he appeared. Uh, so we'll talk something, we'll talk slightly different today about Lord Jagannath. Um, so, because I was very inspired also after her class to talk about a few things. So, we speak about this Purushottama Shetra. This is not something that we just made up in Kali Yuga that we're going to call Jagannath Puri as Purushottama Shetra. The description of this actually is there found in Skanda Purana, in Utkal Kanda of Skanda Purana. So during the dissolution of the universe or Pralaya, uh, at that time Markande Rishi for many, many uh, many, many generations, he was able to do this meditation. Like his, medita his meditation didn't break. It was very firm. He was you know, constantly chanting mantras, meditating. And when the pralaya broke, his, his meditation actually broke because he saw that everything was getting consumed by the water and he was like, there was no land for him to grab on. So he kept, for, he kept swimming in this water to see is there a safe place for him to kind of thing. And then, um, you know, he sees Lord uh, Vishnu and Lakshmi Devi on this part of land. And as soon as he sees them, you know, he starts kind of swimming towards them, offers them obeisances. And, and then he's actually surprised because this is pralaya, right? Nothing should survive destruction, right? And then he asks Lord Vishnu, what is this? Lord Vishnu says that this kshetra is very dear to him and it is his eternal abode. And this kshetra is not bound by any laws of the universe. A person who enters this place Knowing who Lord Krishna is and his eternal nature there never takes birth again. That spot is where Jagannath Puri resides today. So Jagannath Puri is eternal. It is the eternal abode of the Lord. That is why it's called Purushottama Shetra. That is why it is one of the four principal places of pilgrimage for all people who follow Sanatana Dharma in India. Um, it is a very, very important and holy place for us. And the Lord of Purushottama Shetra is none other than the most beautiful Lord Jagannath. 
when I think of an accessible deity, and of course, you know, everyone has their own feelings. Some people think like rather Krishna very accessible. Some people feel Krishna stealing butter very accessible. I actually think Lord Jagannath is very accessible. When you see Lord Jagannath, like look, you can see Lord Jagannath in the altar. What is the first thing that comes to your mind? Smile. He's happy. You know, there's no seriousness. You know, he's not going to curse you. He's just smiling. He's just chilling. Accessibility of Lord Jagannath is unbelievable. And it, it's not just um, Hindus or people who follow Sanatana Dharma who feel that. Now, I, I, my pendant has now started wearing out, but I wear a Jagannath pendant on my neck beads. And whenever we've gone out, whether it's on book distribution or even just outside at stores, and I've had one particular encounter where I, I was in a checkout line and the cashier was staring at me. I was like wondering why she's staring at me. For, she just kept staring. And then she said, why are you wearing a smiley face? on your neck. So I said, you know, this, this is not a smiley face. This is a, this is a very important uh, deity in Hindu faith. It's called Lord Jagannath. And, uh, it's a form of Krishna. And she, you know, she, was, she seemed a little interested in Hinduism. She knew who Krishna was. And we started talking about, uh, I'm sorry? Okay. We started talking about who Jagannath is. And so she said, she's like, what drew me attention to it was I was having a really bad day, but I kept staring at your pendant and my day just became better. Like I feel like smiling, like I feel so happy. That is the power of Lord Jagannath. You know, and we'll, we'll come to a little bit about Lord Jagannath coming to the Western world in a second, but His, in His Holiness Indra Dhunma Maharaj also has said many times when they do the Polish Yatra, one of the things, part of their festival is a Rath Yatra that they do. And Maharaj is like, these people have never, most people don't even believe in God. But somehow when they see Jagannath, the, like the thing from deep within, it manifests. That is Sarva Sichaham Radhisa Nivishto. Matta Smritir Gyanam Apohanam Cha. Matta Smritir Gyanam. When people see Lord Jagannath, the remembrance in their heart is invoked. It immediately just wakes up. Oh, this is so beautiful. Is there something, something about Lord Jagannath is uh, very beautiful. Um, his <laughs> Bhakti Prashota Maharaj in one of his classes said something really nice and it's a little, I'm not sure how politically correct it is, but we're going to still say it because I really like it. Maharaj talks about how accessible Lord Jagannath is because Lord Jagannath is dark skin, right? He's black skin. So he's accessible by people who are dark skin. Baladev is white, who's so accessible by people who are light skin. And Mother Subhadra takes care of everybody else. So, you know, it's a very, it's a, so he's accessible to everybody. I really like that. Like this shows how accessible Lord Jagannath is. And the reason for, for me personally, what I feel the most accessible story of Lord Jagannath is how Lord Jagannath manifested in the Western world. I'm sure most of you know the story, but I want to say it because it's one of my favorite stories. Because when we think about mercy of the Lord, it comes in many ways, right? Like, remember we talked about like small decisions make a big change in people's life. Like, when you reflect on the story of His Divine Grace, A.C. Bhaktivedanta Swami Shla Prabhupada, how Prabhupada came to the right? Like, somebody you know, met a gentleman, Garwal, who said, oh, my son is living in the U.S., he can help sponsor your visa. Like, what are the chances of Prabhupada being someone who said, yeah, my son, without even asking his son, he just said, yeah, okay, he'll take care of sponsoring your visa. You know, Prabhupada just came to U.S. like that. You know, Sumati Maharaji, you know, she just gave him a, like, it's like so much of it seems, of course, Prabhupada was lifetime and preparation, but so much of it, this seems like chance, right? But it's not just chance, it is Krishna changing things, you know, and we read in 8 that for devotees, Krishna changes destiny. Like, you could see Krishna doing wonderful times to make this happen. Similarly, for the deities that were found of Lord Jagannath. So, um, most of you here are familiar with ISKCON, International Society for Krishna Consciousness. We are one of the temples of ISKCON here in North America. Back in 1965, um, His Divine Grace A.C. Bhaktivedanta Swami came onto the shores of U.S. He landed uh, on intern and then went to Pennsylvania and then eventually made his way to New York. And then in 1966, International Society for, for Christian Consciousness was established. So after ISKCON was established in New York in 1966, Prabhupada went to the West Coast and he went to San Francisco. The 1960s in America were a very interesting time. It was when Vietnam War was going on. Uh, the first wave of immigration had just opened up. And there was, um, especially because of the war, there was a lot of, um, how do I say, frustration. People were, especially young people were feeling um, disillusioned and feeling like 
is this worth it? Is this the right thing that's happening, you know, for the country at that time? So um, at that time, there was a lot of people trying to find peace in various ways. So um, Prabhupada's disciples recommended him, okay, why don't we go to San Francisco? Because there's a lot of young people here at that time. So Prabhupada goes to San Francisco and it, it's an amazing experience. A lot of young people who have heard about Prabhupada already from New York are very excited to meet him. So one of his early disciples, uh, you know, her name was Melanie. Eventually, she became initiated to Malti Devi Dasi, who was proper, very one of Prabhupada's early disciples. Uh, she was serving Shla Prabhupada in San Francisco. And, you know, one day she went to like a local, and we have to remember, right, this is the 60s in America. It is not like we have Indian, nowadays, even in a small city like Austin or Round Rock, there's like an Indian grocery store in, seems like at every intersection of I-35 right now. Like there's so many Indian stores. Back in the 60s, there weren't that many, right? Um, I know some devotees here in our temple have been living in the US in 60s and 70s. And Prabhu's, maybe you can agree, was very different back in the 70s. So they weren't, it wasn't as prominent, right? So she wanted to get some ingredients to cook and just buy something. So she goes to a, an export, I think it's called World Exports or World Imports or something, like a small store where they had all of these ethnic products there. So there she sees a small figurine, in her words, a small figurine. It was like, uh, you know, black in color and like looked like a, uh, if, you're, if you're familiar with Native American, they call, they call them as totem poles. So if you've seen pictures, particularly in the northern, not northwestern area, like in Washington state, or if you go up to Canada and British Columbia, they have something called totem poles, which the native, the native American or native Canadians used to build and they'd worship them. So this looks, Jagannath looked like a totem pole to hers, but was at an Indian store, looked interesting. So she said, let me take this for Prabhupada. She takes it to show Shila Prabhupada. And when Shila Prabhupada sees this like, you know, six inch figurine or doll as she calls it, Prabhupada immediately falls on the floor and offers obeisances. And she's taken aback like, what did she get? And then Prabhupada immediately, he doesn't tell her who it is. Prabhupada says, were there two more figures like this in yellow and white? And she's like, I, I'm not sure. So I go to the store, see if they had it. And she rushes back to the store and she finds, she finds them. So she brings them, she brings them to Shri Prabhupada and Prabhupada explains to them that this is Lord of the Universe. And that is how the Lord of the Universe made his appearance in the Western world. Now, this is significant. This is extremely significant because in Jagannath Puri, if you are not a Hindu by birth, you cannot actually go get darshan of Lord Jagannath. So what does Lord Jagannath do? He comes out. He, not just for Rathyatra, now he came to the Western world. So the first set of carved deities, now ISKCON has 500 temples around the world and beautiful Radha Krishna Gornita deities, but the first deities in ISKCON were not Radha Krishna. They were Jagannath Baldev Subhadra. They were carved by these early disciples of Prabhupada and in Berkeley Temple, which is in San Francisco, is where they were worshipped and they continue to be worshipped today. So this is the mercy of Lord Jagannath. And from that one small deity that Namalti Prabhu found in like a bin at a random grocery store, that's how far the movement has grown. Today, Rathyatra take place in all major cities around the world. Like this weekend, as Rathyatra just finished in Detroit. Right, Prabhu? It's going on right now. Detroit, yesterday, there was Rathyatra in Brampton, which is a suburb of, a suburb of Toronto. Last weekend, there was Rathyatra in Toronto. Next weekend, I don't know what city it's in. The following weekend is in Los Angeles, right? It's in Los Angeles. New York Rathyatra was in June. In Europe, there's multiple Rathyatras happening. And the most magical thing of what happened with this Rathyatra is that Prabhupada, and Prabhupada wanted Rathyatra to happen. So 1967, when they found the first set of Jagannath deities, Prabhupada explained Rathyatra. And Prabhupada was very fond of Rathyatra. As a young child, when he was seven years old, he had heard about the Puri Rathyatra and he asked his father, build me a cart. I want to do Rathyatra also. So Shla Prabhupada, as a seven-year-old, you know, he invited all his friends and his, their neighbors in their community made offerings for Lord Jagannath. They pulled a chariot and they did like the return festival, everything, you know, that was so dear to Shla Prabhupada. So Prabhupada was very fond of Rathyatra. So in 1967, he shared with them about what Rathyatra is. So devotees didn't know what a chariot is. Like if you grew up in, like if you, we are used to Ratha. Ratha's English translation is a chariot. And for most people, even today, if you're not Indian, if I say chariot, you think of like the gladiators with their horses, 
right you think of that as a chariot you don't think of like a canopy built thing and stuff like that right so they didn't know so the first chariot that was built in 1967 was on a flat bed truck so they put the deities and if you see pictures of it the deities are also not facing us they are put like like kind of in a square form so each date so whichever direction you look you see a deity it's like it's like cuz like, that's all they could fit on the flat bed truck because they couldn't fit all the three deities on the flat bed truck and then but prabhupad was so touched by the devotees like he was so touched by their enthusiasm to do this to so touched by their enthusiasm to want to you know build this chariot like that and then the next year in 1968 they had the first big festival rath yatra festival in san francisco and honestly since then i don't think anyone has ever looked back like if you google up 198 1968 san francisco rath yatra the volume of people that were there is like insane like it is so packed so crowded and it it's very significant when you think of like these rath yatras because they brought so many people into the hakesha movement in the 60s people were just so again like you see jagannath you can't help but smile you can't help but follow like his magic he is like he is like that pied piper you see lord jagannath and kirtan you just want to go behind him you know that is the potency of purushottama that is the potency of supreme lord so so it is it is so amazing to think of like this singular incident you know that had to be sparked by purushottama sarvasya chaham hridi sanivishta by the lord in our heart to pick up that out of everything in that store why just that the supreme lord spark something in her because of her devotion her commitment to serve and and it is this really shows how accessible lord is purushottama is right you know in the form of jagannath that he has um helped explain this in what i was saying earlier is now of course all major cities in north america have it but um even rath yatra in india for the longest time rath yatra in india was just puri rath yatra but because you know you have temples now all over india in so many villages and towns rath yatra is taking place everywhere i was just seeing pictures um of like rath yatra in hyderabad where you know chinna jeer swami was like there to open up the festival and like they're happening in every nook and corner of the city where, where is uh, kolavecha shri the prabhu he's not he's inside prabhu was telling like in his community also they do rath yatra like in his like literally in his apartment community they're doing rath yatra that is how popular rath yatras have become but it started not from it started after ja- so jagannath had to come outside of india to make rath yatra as popular in india also but it's like it's such because that is his mercy the lord makes himself accessible so that we do not have an excuse we cannot say that krishna is not visible krishna is not there for krishna is there for us we just have to turn to find him and if you don't want to turn you don't want to waste that energy to look for him just look inside he's in your heart worship that parmatma within your heart and you will see you know how much it changes in our life so today thank you all for giving this opportunity to meditate in purushottama month about about purushottama from purushottama yoga talking about purushottama kshetra so thank you so much for that um so before we go into aarti one of the other things that is recommended to do during the purushottama month is to chant bhajans glorifying the lord so uh, we thought we will every sunday before aarti we will sing one bhajan that glorifies the lord and today because we spoke about lord jagannath we're going to sing jagannath ashtakam so i'm just waiting for the devotees to come here but as they get set up to sing jagannath ashtakam any questions comments reflections any corrections anything else to add yes it is called purushottama yoga it is called P- yoga of the supreme that's my i don't know if there is more significance to that i've just heard in the shastras and the title of it kind of made sense to me i don't know anyone else if there is a other reason why we chant chapter 15 any other thank you for asking any other questions comments reflections yes prabhu I don't know Prabhu it depends on the mistake I think <laughs> you can always tell Krishna said I'm forgetful this so no, I I actually don't know the answer but I think see the mistakes are very interesting right it's like I think very often um very often we have this image 
of God as someone who punishes us for everything. But actually, I feel like Krishna, like, it, it doesn't actually correlate to who the Supreme Personality of God it is. You know, I've given this, I tell the teenagers this sometimes, right? Even when we fall, not to go on a full tangent, but when we talk about the four regulator principles, right? But, you know, and one of like, no meat eating, no intoxication, no gambling, no illicit sex. And we also talk about not having tea, coffee, or onion and garlic. So I remember telling this to teenagers when we were discussing this, that, you know, if you drank a Coca-Cola that day, you drank it. Do you really think Krishna is going to like send a thunderbolt at you right away? How dare you drink this Coca-Cola? I'm going to send you to hell for drinking this Coca-Cola. That how does that tie in with the Supreme Lord who's just telling a reside within your heart, right? So I think like, it depends, as I said, the scale of your mistake. But on a serious note, I think that it's, it's for us, when we do a mistake, it is important for us to remember the Lord more and accept that this is a mistake. I'm not doing it again. You know, and again, uh, giving an analogy that we gave to the kids, you know, we spoke about onion and garlic, right? Now, if you accidentally eat a piece of onion somewhere you didn't know, yeah, it's okay. If it's raining outside and you crave onion budgie, you have a problem. So it's, there's a scale, right? And it's very important to understand what is a mistake, right? And, and that's why that verse, um, Apichet Durachara, which comes in the ninth chapter where Krishna says, someone who performs an abominable act, if they're my devotees, I forgive them. Um, in the purport, Prabhupada talks about like, it's an accidental thing. If it's repetitive, it's, Krishna's not going to forgive. And that's why, Vaishnava, and I know that's not your question, but it prompted me to share something I just read. That is why Vaishnava Aparad is something really powerful, is that when you look at accidental mistakes, like eating onion that somebody, your, your relative might have bought you some dish, didn't know your diet restrictions, it had some onion garlic in it, you ate it by mistake, felt really bad about it, chanted 10 extra rounds, all good, right? Um, you crave onion bhaji, problem. But in, in a more serious note, in if we... If you look in our, in our pastimes, in terms of mistakes, particularly offenses to others, how Krishna has reacted. In a small instance, you know, Krishna, Krishna most, most cases has taken the position of compassion. Actually, most of the cases. When you look at, even when you look at like Shishupal, like look how compassionate Krishna was to Shishupal. He says, you had to curse Krishna hundred consecutive times before Krishna would react. You know? When does Krishna come take position of anger? When does Krishna actually come to rectify somebody's mistake? Exactly, when his devotees are hurt. And even when the devotees are hurt, when his devotees are hurt and Krishna is coming to punish them, Krishna says that the forgiveness that you're asking is not mine to give. It is this. We see this again when Durvasa Muni and Ambarish Maharaj happens. You know, Krishna helps Ambarish Maharaj by sending Sudarshan Chakra. And when Durvasa Muni comes to Krishna and says, Okay, I'm sorry, I accept my mistake. I know I messed up. What does Krishna say? I forgive you? No. He says, Go ask forgiveness from Ambarish Maharaj. Same thing, a same thing happens in the case of offense that Mother Sachi Devi commits with Advaita Acharya when Mahaprabhu is going away with. Mother Sachi is very hard on Advaita Acharya saying, it's because of you this is happening, because of you my son is going away. She offends him. Chaitanya Mahaprabhu is like, Chaitanya Maha, she, and then she realizes her mistake, but Chaitanya Mahaprabhu says, I'm not the one to forgive you, you have to go to him. So Krishna is very clear that when mistakes do happen, particularly when we're committing offense to another devotee, Krishna will not forgive us. The forgiveness is the devotee's gift. I'm sorry, I don't know if that answered your question. I think you were asking a light question and I took it in a whole different direction. So, thank you, Prabhu. But if you did a small mistake like forgetting to pick dry cleaning or miss something in your grocery list, that's okay. Krishna will forgive you for that. This month and every month also. But if it's a bigger mistake, you should ask Rajanandri Mataji for forgiveness. So, that's what I do when I forget something. I ask Rupa Sagar for forgiveness. I'm sorry, I forgot to pick this up. So, uh, are we ready for the bhajan? Are they ready? Okay, okay. Any other questions, comments, reflections? Jai, thank you everyone for joining us today for our Sunday program. What we're going to do is after the bhajan, we'll stop for a few minutes. But when we stop, we won't make any announcements. We request you all to please rise uh, and we'll get ready for Aarti. And after Aarti, we'll do some more announcements and then we will serve prashadam. Thank you so much. If I committed any offenses or said something inappropriate, please forgive me. And I hope you all had something to take away from the class today. Hare Krishna.
Oh, when they sing this bhajan, there are four lines in this bhajan. The first three lines of the bhajan, they will just, he's just going to sing, right? Krishnanandala? For Jagannath Ashakam, the first three lines just sing. Only repetition is Jagannath Swami. Yeah. So the last line, which is Jagannath Swami Nayana Patakami, that will be call and response. The rest of the bhajan, they'll just sing because it's a long bhajan. So. Sangita Karavo Buddha Biri Nari Vadana Kamala Swadhamma Dupa Rama Shambhu Brahma Marapati Ganesha Chita Pada Chaganata Swami Nayana Bhatagami Bhavatu Me Jagannath Swami Nayana Bhattagami Bhavatu Me Uje savye venum shira shishi ki pecham kati tate Dukulam netrante sahachara kataksham viradate Sasa Shri Madrinda Vana Vashati Lila Parichato Jagannatha Swami Nayana Bhattagami Bhavatu Me Jagannath Swami Nayana Bhattagami Bhavatu Me Chire nila shikare Vasan prasadanta sahaja babadre na bhaina Subhadra madhyasa sakashura seva vasarado Jagannatha Swami Nayana Bhattagami Bhavatu Me Jagannatha Swami Nayana Bhattagami Bhavatu Kripa 
ಸಜಲ ಚಲಾದ ಶ್ರೀ ನಿರುಚಿರ ಮಾಣಿ ರಾಮ ಸ್ಫುರ ರಮಲ ಪಂಕೇಲು ಹಮುಕ ಸುರೇಂದ್ರಯಾರಾಧ್ಯ ಶ್ರೀ ಗಾನ ಶಿಕ ಗೀತ ಚರಿತ ಜಗನಾಥ ಸ್ವಾಮಿ ನಾಯನ ಪಾತ ಗಾಮಿ ಜಗನಾಥ ಸ್ವಾಮಿ ನಾಯನ ಭಾತ ಗಾಮಿ ಚಂಪತಿ ಮಿಲಿತ ಭೂದೇವ ಪತಿ ಪ್ರಾದುರ್ಭಾವ ಪ್ರತಿಪದ ಉಪಕನ್ಯ ಸದಾಯ ದಯ ಸಿಂಧುರ್ಬಂಧು ಸಕಲ ಜಗತ ಸಿಂಧು ಸುತಾಯ ಜಗನಾಥ ಸ್ವಾಮಿ ನಾಯನ ಭಾತ ಗಾಮಿ ಭಾವತು ಜಗನಾಥ ಸ್ವಾಮಿ ನಾಯನ ಭಾತ ಗಾಮಿ ಭಾವತು ಚಾರಣಾಂತಶಿರಾಶಿ ರಸನಂದೋರಾಧಾಶಾರಶವಾಲಿಂಗ ಶುಕ ಜಗನಾಥ ಸ್ವಾಮಿ ನಾಯನ ಪಾತ ಗಾಮಿ ಭಾವತುಮೆ ಜಗನಾಥ ಸ್ವಾಮಿ ನಾಯನ ಪಾತ ಗಾಮಿ ಭಾವತುಮೆ ಚೆ ರಾಜ ನಾಚಕಾಮಿ ವಿಭಾವ ನಯಚೆ ಹಂಮ್ಯ ಸಕಲ ಜನಕನ್ಯಂ ವರವಾದು ಸದಾ ಕಾಲೆ ಕಾಲೆ ಪ್ರಮತ ಪತಿ ನೀತ ಚರಿತ ಜಗನಾಥ ಸ್ವಾಮಿ ನಾಯನ ಪಾತ ಗಾಮಿ ಭಾವತು ಜಗನಾಥ ಸ್ವಾಮಿ ನಾಯನ ಪಾತ ಗಾಮಿ ಭಾವತು ಹರತಂ ಸಂಸಾರ ಧೃತಾರ ಸುರಪಾತೆ ಪಪಾನೀತಿ ಕಪಾರ ಯಾದವ ಪಾತೆ 
आहो दीन नाते निहिता चरानो निश्चित मीदम चागना कसामी नायना भात गामी भावत में चागनाथ स्वामी नायन भात गामी भावत में चागनाथ स्वामी नायन भात गामी भावत में जगनाथ स्वामी नायन पात गामी बाबा तुमे जगनाथ स्वामी नायन पात गामी बाबा तुमे चागनाथ स्वामी नायन पात गामी भावत में चागनाथ स्वामी नायन पात गामी भावत में Jaya Jaganath Jaya Jaganath Paladev Jaya Subhadra Jaya Jagannatha, Jaya Jagannatha, Paladev Jaya Subhadra. Jaya Jagannath, Jaya Jagannath, Jaya Balade, Jaya Subhadra. Jaya Jagannath, Jaya Jagannath, Jaya Balade, Jaya Subhadra. Hari Bo, Hari Bo, Hari Bo, Hari Bo Nita Gauda Hari Bo, Hari Bo, Hari Bo, Gauda Hari Bo Nita Gauda Hari Bo Hari Bo Hari Bo Gauda Hari Bo Shishi Chagna Balde Subhadra Maharani Ki we request everyone to please rise for Aarti. You can come closer to take darshan of the deities. Hare Krishna. 